faithfully bound. In this video, I want to discuss with you a huge change that we have made. I was so nervous at first. I was rolling things around in my head so much. I had no idea what I wanted to do or what was best. And I lie awake at night, all night long one night, and I'm not exaggerating, all night long. <laughs> I finally drifted off to sleep. Last time I checked the clock, it was 6 a.m. And then I slept till 7 a.m. <laughs> so it was crazy. It was a crazy night. We have decided not to homeschool. I was already planning my year, y'all. I was picking out curriculum. I was getting everything ready. I knew we needed a change. I wasn't sure what kind of change exactly and how that was going to look. I looked into different co-op options that offered classes and they met two days a week. One was seventh through 12th grade only. The other was K through 12 and each group had their own classes. So the kindergartners are not gonna be in there with the eighth graders or 12th graders or whatever. Those were the two main options I was looking at. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. Also, my son's best friend is homeschooled. And he also wanted to do one of these co-ops with us. So we got in there wasn't another spot for him. So then we kept trying to look and find things so that the boys could be together. And nothing was really working out. My son stated in the previous school year before it ended that he wanted to go to school for high school. I looked into some options. There was one school that's 20 minutes away from the house. And we thought that was our choice. That was our first choice. There was a waiting list, so we couldn't get in. And the only way that he could get in is if somebody dropped their spot. So then I just kind of let it rest all summer. My son talked about changing his mind, not wanting to go to school. So that's when I looked into the co-ops and last minute, he said he did want to go to school and I had been planning our next school year. So I called that school that we were on the waiting list for to ask if there was any spots. Lo and behold, a few spots opened up. So we scheduled a tour. We went on this tour with my husband and my son. When we got in the car, he said he did not like it. My son and I had toured another school that was closer to our house. This is 10 minutes from the house. We live in town, the school's in town, super close. When we first toured that, my son said that he didn't like that school, of course. But after touring the school that was 20 minutes away, he said that he liked the first school better. So we talked and we tried to figure things out and my husband told him, look, what you decide is going to be the next four years because you're going into high school and we need to figure this out and we need to make a decision and stick with it. Ultimately, my son said he wanted to go to school and the only way that he was gonna go to school, <laughs> according to myself, was Christian school. Would he go back to public school only over my dead body? <laughs> I, oh, I don't like public school. There's so many things wrong with the general government public schools. We could go on and on, but you know, that's a whole, whole nother thing. Um, and I feel like as parents, it's our responsibility 
to make sure that our children have a Christian education, be that homeschool, be that private Christian school, whatever. Now, that being said, our older two children are 23 and 24. Both of those children went through public school their entire life. We knew nothing about other options. Homeschool was not like really a thing. Like I had heard about it and the kids that I knew when I was in school that went to homeschool, we were like, oh, they're weird, you know? Same thing with my husband. And I mean, there was just like a weird stigma to it back then when I was coming up, but now everybody homeschools. Like there are so many homeschool families, they're everywhere, especially since the shutdown, right? So many people have decided to pull their children out of school and just homeschool. So it's just a different kind of thing than it was then. And when I had my first two children many years ago, I didn't know there were other options and there weren't charter school options here. There was just nothing really. I didn't know what to do. I was young. I was a teenage mother. We had no clue. We thought that you raised your children, put them in public school and that's what you did. And like you really didn't look in anything else. Those were the things. But with my last child, who is now 14, I learned a lot along the way and I have met so many people that homeschool and so we homeschooled. During the shutdown, it was awful. The kids learned nothing. It was a joke. And I was seeing this and realizing that he wasn't learning anything. They missed a whole year and a half, two, two years, I don't know, of school. They were just doing little rinky dink assignments. They weren't really learning. And then when they went back, they opened, closed, opened, closed because somebody had COVID and we have to shut the school down again. And it was very unstable. I did not like it. So I said, let's homeschool. It made more sense than him sitting in front of a computer, not learning anything from these people and being in and out of school. So we homeschooled half of sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, we homeschooled. I noticed my child becoming more and more of a recluse, I guess you could say. And at first, you know, that was fine because we were all supposed to stay away from everybody and just staying in the house was just fine. But even after that all quit, my son didn't want to go back out in the world. I could not get him to do anything. I had to just make him. If I wanted him out of the house, not a choice. And it just kept getting worse and I did not like it. He was so antisocial and just closed off. When people asked him questions, he like didn't look at them. He would just, you know, give the shortest possible answers and just not really engage. And he had not been like this before. So I think that, and I'm sure for lots of children, this whole shutdown thing just ruined a lot of stuff, right? And it made kids depressed. So we took that into our homeschool and he never came out of it. And I myself during this time had two miscarriages, ended up having like such low iron, it was ridiculous and didn't even know what was wrong with me. I couldn't get out of bed. I didn't feel depressed. I physically couldn't. And I was like this for an entire year. Finally went to the doctor and figured out what was wrong with me. Got on iron supplements, I'm better. So 
between him not wanting to do anything and him pulling away from the world through all of this mess and then me and what I was going through personally and me not being in good health just made everything worse right so ultimately we decided you know we're gonna listen to him this is what he wants and we're gonna work with him on this decision but it would not be public school we settled on a school it was the one that we thought we didn't want but we went with it everybody was great it was fantastic the people there are amazing and to have a school based around the Bible is just amazing to me. I just cannot express how pleased I am with the atmosphere. And to know that my child is going to be having Bible every day and chapel every week, it's, it's just so, <laughs> it makes me happy gonna try not to get emotional this is just and he has blossomed in just this short time this is his second day of school and this is the full day yesterday it was a half day and just you know doing the tour talking to the people and um, Tuesday night was orientation and the staff knows him already. And they were coming up to him and talking to him and he is just answering questions and engaging and smiling. And my husband and I later that night are like, this is crazy, we love this. <laughs> I, like we're so glad of the change in him. He is excited, he wants to do this and he's on the soccer team. And he's had a couple days of practice even before school started so he's gotten to know a few people and i am just so happy for him and i feel so bad that i allowed the withdrawal and didn't quite understand what was going on and I, it's not an excuse, but I do contribute what I went through to not being as responsive to things around me and not noticing as much as I should have. But I think it's going to be better and everything's going to be fine. This is new. Like I said, we are only on day two right now. So y'all just pray for us that it goes well and that he's happy and the environment stays the way that it is now. They had a whole new staffing revamp this year. So I think that has a lot to do with the very upbeat attitude in the school. Everybody's happy to be there. And it, I'm sure that's great for all the other students too, you know, to have the staff, the administrative staff is mostly new and then they've got new teachers and everybody's just happy to be there. And I'm sure that helps with the children's morale. And my neighbor who is also the wife of our pastor, they have chosen to put their son in Christian school as well. And she said to me, it's okay. Nothing is written in stone. And also nothing is the Holy Grail. Be it the homeschool, be it the Christian school, like nothing is going to be perfect. And if it doesn't work out, it, like I said, it's not written in stone. You can change. And that really put me at ease. Just that little bit from her. Because in my head, I'm freaking out thinking whatever we do has to be exactly what we do forever. But if it doesn't work out, we can't always change. 
but I really feel like it's going to work out. And I've been praying. And if y'all would pray for us, that would be amazing. I just wanted to give y'all the update. I still push homeschool. If you're homeschooling, keep doing what you do. Just make sure you're paying attention to your child and their mental well-being instead of just the academics. Pay attention to how they're responding to things, how they're responding to people and situations, and try to see what you need to adjust. And if your child is old enough, have these conversations with your child and work with them. I do feel like if we started homeschool from the beginning, it would have been different. But since he went to public school and the charter school up until shut down, what, like, I think he was in fifth grade. I don't, I don't even know. These last several years are just, it's like a whole different time frame before shut down and after shut down, like pre and then post is just crazy. And I hope that at some point I can feel and everybody else can feel, I've talked to several people that feel this way. Like at some point, hopefully we can come to where we are just living life. Like there's no more pre and then post. It's just life. Hopefully we don't separate them anymore and we can get back into the swing of everything. I, I know these last few years have been rough on everybody. So I do think if we had homeschooled from the beginning, it would have been different. But since he had been schooling this whole time, like I said, he wasn't used to it. I wasn't used to it. I was new. I was learning. I didn't know all of the options in homeschool. I didn't know the co-ops all of the groups, all of the things, and I'm learning as I'm going, and he has to bear with me while I'm going through this because I don't know what to do for him, you know? And so I think that made a big difference. He was used to a certain thing, and now he is back in it, and he is thriving, and I love it. So y'all pray for us. Pray for my son, pray for my husband and myself, for our entire family. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I will answer to the best of my ability. And if you would like help or direction, I can do my best to help you. But ultimately, the decision is yours and I will give as much information as I can on homeschool and what I know so far about Christian school. I just know that if we're not homeschooling, we definitely, the other option for us is only Christian school. And if this is not for you, this is not what you're doing, that's fine. Everybody has to do what's right for their family. And I am not judging you for that. You do what's best for you and your family. And you don't let anybody pressure you into anything else because what works for them may not work for you. What works for me may not work for you. But you can ask questions. You can have conversations with people. Just really pay attention to what would be best for your family. And there are so many things people are gonna say, but you know what? If you're around people that are just judging you, maybe this, those are just the people you don't need to be around. So kind of cut them out. <laughs> and even through this process, this short process, cause we jumped right in a week before school started, even through this, like I've had people comment to me, uh, well, public school is good enough for me. Public school is good enough for my kids. Uh, you shouldn't homeschool. homeschool. Why would you homeschool? It would be better for your kid if you did this or if you did that. And I'm thinking, how do you know what's best for my kid? How do you know 
what's best for our family. And just because something's good enough for you or good enough for your children doesn't mean that it's going to work in our situation. And now this is the ugliness in me, <laughs> so bear with me, I'm sorry, but maybe we don't want good enough. You know, maybe we want to do better than good enough. And I may have failed my older children by not being like living in the Christian life when we were raising them up until they were in high school. I did them a disservice. I didn't do things right. I didn't have guidance on this path of my walk with Christ. I just was kind of winging it and going through things. And I was young. I was 17 when I got married and had children and my husband was 18. So we were two teenagers that got married and were trying to raise these children and also trying to grow up and trying to figure out life and everything was just a mess. And we didn't know what we were doing, but we tried and learned along the way. And I do feel like I failed them in this aspect, not raising them up in the Lord and not doing those things that I know now that we should have done. But I can't go back. I can't change it. I can't live in the shame of it. I have to move forward. And with the last child, we are doing the best that we can. We are in a completely different place in our lives. We were older. I was 27 when I had him and I am in my 40s now. <laughs> so I've grown, my husband has grown and here we are. So I am doing things differently and I want to do better and I want to give him the best that I can. My husband wants to give him the best that he can. Like we're just different people in this phase of our life and it just is what it is. Like I said, guys, shoot me questions, talk to each other, uh, reach out to people around you. There's resources, there's help. Just call, call schools, call places, call the co-ops, call, get in the Facebook groups for the homeschool and just ask ask just just ask anything to anybody just get the information and make your decisions and do it based on what is best in your life and for your family i love you guys thank you for listening i hope that you guys will come back again next time i love you and let's help each other in this journey and our faith and our walk with God. I love y'all. Bye.